How They Croaked by Georgia Bragg. Elizabeth the First. Elizabeth was a princess. Her father, Henry the Eighth, was enraged she wasn't a prince. Elizabeth knew this because he beheaded her mother, Anne Boleyn, in part because she gave birth to a girl. That kind of thing makes an impression. Several years later, he beheaded her stepmother, too. So being a princess was scary. Elizabeth liked her head and wanted to keep it. At eight, she said, I will never marry. Elizabeth orchestrated her life so that no man could ever take her head in a violent, bloody death. Elizabeth's older stepsister, Mary, was queen before her. Her nickname was Bloody Mary. They didn't have family barbecues, but Mary did enjoy burning Protestants at the stake. Luckily for everybody, Mary died, and Elizabeth became the Queen of England. The red-haired Elizabeth was 25 years old when the coronation ring was placed on her long, narrow finger. Now that she was queen, her advisors set her up on dates and told her to get a husband, have an heir, and then she'd be safe. She liked men, and they liked her, but she liked her head more. I am already bound onto a husband, which is the Kingdom of England, she announced. The Bachelorette Queen became known as Elizabeth the Great. She was also known as the Virgin Queen, although the truth of that title cannot be confirmed. Besides being witty, smart, and charismatic, Elizabeth had simple strategies for success, saved the country from bankruptcy, owned 3,000 dresses, Use the chopping block sparingly. Wear miles of pearls. Dance, dance, dance. Avoid war like the plague. And use skin whitening lotion made of egg whites, powdered eggshell, alum, borax, and poppy seeds. Like father, like daughter, Elizabeth did a few ungreat things. Beheading the Duke of Norfolk. Mary, Queen of Scots, and the Earl of Essex. Even though she had her reasons. On the other hand, she stopped the Spanish Armada from invading England. That was truly great. Except for the occasional rotten tooth and a pesky open sore on her shin that didn't heal for nine years, Elizabeth enjoyed an uncommonly long and healthy life with her head still attached. But at 69, Elizabeth's body was starting to show signs of wear and tear. Whose wouldn't? She was forgetful and her joints were swollen and painful. The coronation ring that had been placed on her thin finger 44 years earlier when she became queen was getting hard to see on her swollen finger. It was hurting her and the ring had to be sawed off, an event disturbing to Elizabeth as a symbol that her reign was almost over and that her fingers weren't pretty anymore. She never went out in public again. Elizabeth's doctor read the horoscope for her birth sign, Virgo. In 1603, a medico-astrological chart was one of the few items in a doctor's kit, along with a knife, a flint, and a cup. Elizabeth's horoscope said that the stars were in her favor, but the horoscope stars were wrong. Her throat was closing up with an infection and sores. She had a high fever. She had trouble moving around, but the queen refused to get into bed. The bed symbolized the end to her. And she was not ready for that, so cushions were spread on the floor, and there she sat. Elizabeth stared off into space for hours at a time with a finger stuck in her mouth. Maybe it was the finger they sawed the ring off, or maybe it was the finger with the sapphire ring she knew they'd remove when she was dead. The ring they give to the next king. Elizabeth stayed on the floor and refused to be treated by her doctors. No one was going to interfere with the kind of death she had in mind for herself. She wasn't going to lose her head. Her chief minister advised her, Your worship, 
must returneth to the bed. Little man, the word must is not to be used to princes, Elizabeth said. The queen's cousin, Robert Cray, Carey, came from out of town and tried to cheer up by telling her she looked better. That made Elizabeth mad, and she squeezed his hand hard. No, I am not well. She knew it was Carrie's job to wiggle the sapphire ring off of her finger as soon as she stopped breathing and deliver it to the next king. She was not losing her marbles. The pus-filled sores in her throat made it impossible to eat, and now her stomach hurt too. Finally, she asked to be helped off the floor so she could stand up. All told, she had been resting on the cushions for three weeks. Everybody was thrilled she was up. But when Elizabeth stood in exactly the same position for 15 hours straight, a big sore in her throat popped, and she felt better, but not for long. The infection moved into her chest. The failing queen finally got into bed. She summoned her musicians to play music softly around her while she lay there, not eating or talking. Archbishop Whitgift came and knelt next to the bed, taking hold of her hand. The archbishop was old like Elizabeth, and he is famous for his dedication at her bedside. The pain in his legs became so prickly and sharp from kneeling that he tried to leave several times, but Elizabeth made it clear he needed to stay put and pray for her soul. As a result, his prayers took on a new fiery zeal. God have mercy! While his enthusiasm rose, Elizabeth closed her eyes and fell asleep. At three o'clock in the morning of March 24, 1603, Queen Elizabeth died the death of her dreams in her sleep. She was 69 years old. She most likely died of pneumonia. A lady-in-waiting removed the sapphire ring from Elizabeth's finger and dropped it out the window to Carrie, who was below, already saddled up on a horse. He rode like the wind for three days to get to Scotland and gave the ring to Elizabeth's first cousin, once removed, who then became the new King of England, James I. The Queen's body was embalmed and placed in a lead coffin. One month later, she was buried in the vault of her grandfather, King Henry VII, in Westminster Abbey. In 1606, her body was moved to a tomb under a large white marble monument in the North Isle. To this day, she is still considered the most popular and effective monarch England ever had. Elizabeth I was a model for women of power in the future. She took the reign, wore the ring, and kept her head.